Hey, welcome back. Uh, we're on building a Rams S21 plane. Uh, first little update on my EAA chapter. We, uh, we had our first uh, Young Eagles event uh, where we take a group of kids up flying, a bunch of volunteer pilots, and we take them up flying. Unfortunately, it started to rain pretty hard uh, right after we finished the ground school, so we never got any kids into the air, which is too bad. Uh, but we did get a lot of hamburgers served in the hangar. Uh, we usually do about five or six Young Eagle events throughout the spring and summer. So we'll see if we can get this, from, this one rescheduled. I'm not sure if we'll uh, just pass on it or try and fit another one in. Um, in, this, uh, in this episode of uh, my channel, um, I cut my workbench off about five feet so I can get the plane turned. Uh, then we get the engine mounted, which is just a great feeling. So uh, one of those milestones, I think, in the build that uh, next to... Uh, getting it on its landing gear, that was a big milestone in my opinion, getting the fuselage on the landing gear. I think getting the engine on is, is one of those uh, events that just makes you feel like you're, you're getting there. Um, also get the oil cooler put on and some other miscellaneous parts on the engine. Uh, but with that, uh, let's jump into mounting that engine. The uh, next thing I'm going to do before mounting the engine is to get this oil cooler mounted. I've seen most builders mount it prior to the uh, engine mount. Uh, I've got this cooler bracket hanging on my firewall right now um, and I can see as I look at this parts diagram is that there's some additional bushings that go in here uh, that need to get cut from the raw stock so I'll get this bracket hung properly and then this is just a bunch of parts and pieces to get this put on but uh, we'll get that installed. Okay it looks like the outer flange of this oil cooler goes on the tab of the engine mount so probably time to get that engine mount on so i'm going to hold off on this get the engine mount on and then come back to this after gathering really just nuts and bolts and washers uh, the engine mount went on fairly easily you got to work it a little bit drill out the holes i drilled out the um, 516 mount just a little bit to make sure i had a good ground this is my ground bus wire that comes through the firewall from my ground bus everything is torqued down it says between 100 and 140 i did 125 um, so everything's torqued went on fairly easily okay i've got these uh trike mount 516 bolts uh in um for the tail dragger mount, it's just the four. I think I've explained this. So if I ever need to add a nose wheel or if a future buyer wants to add the nose wheel, uh, these mounts are in. And it just gives the frame or the mount that much more support. Uh, I'm installing the oil cooler. And this kind of mess of a configuration gets a little bit confusing. I've got this attached properly. Uh, but you've got these support brackets, which look like this. And then they have you... Um, put some some bushing material into the hole to make it a 3 16 hole i'm not sure why they didn't drill it to 3 16 but why we're putting bushing material but again i'm following the instructions the part number for the bushing material is this uh kaac 44-2 but it says fuel pump drain line but it's one quarter 28 or 0 0.028 which is the correct bushing size it's the correct part number but this says it's for the fuel pump drain line. And I looked all over for another part number like this and another piece of material. Couldn't find it, so I am using this. And hopefully when I get to my fuel pump drain line, if I only have four inches rather than five, because I'm going to use about an inch on these bushings, hopefully it works. If not, I'll just order another um, piece of bushing from Rands. Uh, and so I've, I've pressed the bushings in, and it's 3 16 to fit the 3 16 bolt, the AM bolt it looks like that these uh, braces go on the out uh, the outside tab here and then are just bolted on with a and three bolts and then the oil cooler is going to rest here and up here and we'll work on that next i have uh, bolted on my oil cooler the newer kits are 13 row, which is mine. I guess the older kits are nine row coolers. So I'm fortunate to have the 13 row cooler. Uh, a couple point outs. Uh, when you get your lug nuts on here, start your bolts first. I couldn't get these started after I was in here and I didn't have a lot of room for my hands. So I ended up taking this back off again. 
uh, to start the bolts and get the threads kind of lined up before I reattached it. And it is a pain to get it on and off because you've got some spacers under here. You've got some spacers back, back here. Uh, you've got spacers under here. So getting your little fingers in here and getting these spacers lined up, kind of a pain in the neck. So uh, the other thing is you do use some high heat uh, red uh, caulking uh, underneath here. So I've got that on there. And the last thing is this tab wasn't 100% straight. So when, this, when these brace brackets went on, there's a tiny little angle here, but it, these are bolted in with some big old stainless steel rivets. Uh, but I've got that bolted in and I didn't want to bend the tab with fear of breaking it. So I did bolt it on and rivet it with just a slight angle problem. But uh, I should mention that this engine mount comes with a, uh, a tab here to mount the oil cooler. The older kits, they have you use a cushion clamp or a Dell clamp. Um, so the manual, as you come over here, the manual still talks about installing using the cushion clamp. So if you've got a newer kit, you want to ignore these sections with the cushion clamp and it just attaches to the, uh, the um, tab on the uh, engine mount. Oh boy, I really had to film this. I didn't think about it. Um, I'm starting to take apart my workbench. I built this right just before I got the kit delivered and it's been a part of the build. You know, workbenches are kind of special to you. Uh, but I got to chop off about five or six feet of it to turn the plane and get that engine on there. So I'm going to try and save this and move this part of the workbench to the hangar as a hangar table, but we'll see how that goes. I might just demo the thing. Okay, time to get the engine onto the lift. Have my friend Rich come over to help with the lift in the back. Our first effort was to get this pallet up off the ground. I think it's steady. We got the lift hook ready to come down. We got to sit back here. Plane is out on the street. Hopefully it'll stay there until the end and we will get it moved. Okay, we've decided to move the motor back to this corner of the garage. I moved my work table and we'll get it all organized later. Uh, and the plane is now kitty corner back to where the back end of the bench was. And I think we're ready to mount the engine. We're getting the Mounting blocks put in, and I think we're ready to go. The text manual says it makes it a little easier if you lubricate the uh, mount cage and the backside of the bearing. And we're also going to make sure we orient the, the little tab here straight up and down. Uh, a couple of the builder videos have said that that's important. I don't see it anywhere in the text, but we're doing it to all four of them. It took us a little bit of finagling to get this uh, engine on and get all the bolts through. You got to keep raising and lowering by a fraction of an inch and pulling it in, getting one set and then working on the other. So we just kept working it around. Uh, now in tightening, I think others have mentioned it, this bottom bolt in here, when it gets torqued all the way through, if you've got a wrench on it, you can't get the wrench off when the bolt is all the way through. So we got to grind down a wrench uh, to help hold that nut while we're putting the bolt through. But other than that, uh, it went in. It took a little bit of work, but probably, I don't know, 30 minutes. Not a long time, but we got it, all, we got it in. I'm going to tie down the baffles, uh, the part that go underneath the cylinders. And this is the tie that I've used for most of the nuts and bolts, which is a .032. But I also have this .041, which is uh, definitely a thicker, uh, a thicker t wire tie. And I think for the baffles, I'm going to use the, the thicker one that I... Well, I'm certainly not going to claim that wire tying is one of my best skill sets. So what I'm going to do on these bafflings is I've wire tied two together with a thicker gauge wire, uh, braided it, and then I'll send these ends back under to the other side and wire tire that so these two will go back together and I think that'll work but that's uh, that's the way I'm gonna the next thing I'm gonna do is replace this oil plug that's wire tied in the bottom of the crankcase RANS provides you a uh, quick quick release without having to remove the plug for oil changes so this gets replaced with some sealant I saw another video there's probably a pint of um, um, 
uh, it's not actually oil in there it's it's maintainer to keep your cylinders uh, maintained before you uh, run the engine while you have in storage I attached the oil cooler ducting the manual has it at three inches uh, it's now four inches um, and I'm hoping I knew the Titans had some cooling issues before and they've made some changes so they went to a 13 row cooler from a nine row and then a four inch um, ducting from three inch so I'm assuming that's all to address the cooling issues but this is temporary I don't have a tight so I got a feeling to get in here I'm gonna need to get access to that but I uh, got that installed I installed these uh, oil cooler straight out fittings uh, and then I attached the oil cooler assembly hoses I've left them loose for right now it says to line them up with the engine fittings the uh, the manual has you replace a oil vent fitting with one that you modify from a 90 degree and you cut away about three quarters of an inch of this so that you have three quarters from the center line to the end and this is just uh, going to be a vent hose with a vent hose and some clamps okay we've got this uh, new fitting in here and I can see why they have you cut it off. You can't turn it with this piece of the casing here. So you cut off about half of the flange on it. And then you got to get this clamp right at the end because you only have, oh, maybe a quarter inch, half inch of the hose onto that fitting. Uh, but it's just a breather. It's a vent tube, so it's not a pressure tube. And then I ran it down, around, and back down. And... Then it drops down here. You've got this aluminum tube that then cuts into here. And then you've got a clamp and a bracket, angle bracket, that goes into the uh, footing here. And you cut this tube at a 45 degree angle. It needs to hang below uh, the surface to create some venturi effect for, for flow, for airflow. And I think that's about, I haven't riveted this in because I'm not 100% sure that's the exact location, but that's generally how that vent tube goes in. I forgot to mention that this uh, fitting in here has got, uh, I think this is an oil pressure uh, adjustment here, but this was wire tied to the old fitting. So you have got to cut that wire tie to get the fitting out. So you have to rewire tie this, uh, this fitting onto this fitting up here. So don't forget to do that. Well, that's a, a good place to end the video. Uh, that section of build took 18.6 hours. That brings the build to date to 1115.3 hours. And in the next video, we'll get started on the exhaust system, the heat exchanger, uh, maybe the uh, exhaust gas temperature and cylinder head temperature gauges or uh, sensors. Um, maybe a little bit more, but we'll see where that goes. So thanks a lot for watching. And remember, dream it. Just build it.